Do you like basketball? Basketball? Mm -hmm. I like, but I'm not good at. Yes, I'm not. Me too. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the State of the League podcast, the only NBA podcast breaking down what what the Carl Anthony Towns trade means for the Detroit Pistons. Uh, oh. I am, as always, am your host, Jack, a.k.a. Yoke's Joe Star. With me, as always, the world-famous Pablo Escobar. Today, we are joined by internet famous man, uh, the number one ambassador for backyard sports in the history oh. of the world, uh, <laughs> Kofi, Kofi, how you doing today, man? I'm doing good. It's good to be back here. It's good to be back for what season two of this. You guys do yeah. seasons on your podcast, or yeah? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're we're arcs like anime. We're, we're Ooh, our anime. Arc. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Nice. What's hilarious is like in all my file management for this. There's no. It's just like uh, like whatever we <laughs> talked about in the episode with like no real structure to it so i should go back and like label everything up to this point season one uh whether or not that will actually happen is to be determined but today we're talking about the detroit pistons um it's i don't know they're in a unique spot i'm excited for this episode you were one of my first guests on last season the first time we did this and it doesn't feel like that much has changed but like there's a lot of angles we could take to like cope or uh, have hope for the future, I suppose. So always, how, always. Yeah, yeah. How how are you feeling about um just where the Pistons are at as a franchise right now? I feel absolutely better because the Pistons did the one thing that I didn't think they would do going into the next se- last season was clear house. Like that was a big thing. I think the la- last season for for me at least it wasn't the being bad part. It was about being completely lied to. <laughs> by multiple levels of the organization for the entire year <laughs> right first first it starts with the troy weaver apology letter where he's like i'm sorry we're gonna be different we're gonna we're gonna it's all me I, like taking it accountability changed, but we, yeah right <laughs> and then after like he drafts a sar fine that's that's a, like love a sar that's not but in free agency, he gets Monty Morris and Joe Harris. Joe Harris plays maybe like 16 games max. <laughs> Monty Morris is hurt for a majority of the season, plays like six games with us, gets shipped to Minnesota. And then we're then we're worse, right? So yeah. that part, getting lied to about that, bad. Also, the constant press conference lying from Monty Williams, also bad. <laughs> Where like we'd lose and Monty Williams would be like, oh, I gotta shorten the rotation. Next next game, all bench lineup yet again. <laughs> it was the it was the constant I'm like, don't we can be bad. Being bad is fine. Like, fine. Do not like you're lying to us, making the fan base feel it felt like we were being gaslit for the entire season. And I hope that that's not the case this year because we got Bickerstaff, we got Trajan Langdon, and it, it felt like hearing those two speak has given me more confidence in where we're going than in years of Troy Weaver <laughs> and an entire year of Monty Williams. So while on, sur- on the surface it feels like, oh, yeah, Pistons are bad, whatever, they're trying to fix the. I'm like – I feel like there's going to be a complete energy shift and whether that translates into wins or losses, that's fine. If it doesn't, it whatever, it's more of the fact it's like, Hey, you got to build trust with this fan base again, because you Mm -hmm. have completely Jenga block shattered it for the last four years in some change. So that's where I'm kind of at. And again, it's the same place we are last year in terms of goals wise, where it's like 30 wins would I would be like, oh, wow, that's actually crazy. How have you done it? But it's now with like different people in mind, which is which is it's all I can take at this point. All I can look at it. Oh, man. Yeah. Maybe the most classic uh, 14 win answer you can you can rely on is just we're, we're building a culture. That's what it's all about. You know, we're laying the foundation right now. And uh, that, that, <laughs> that's all we got. I guess. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, the Monty Williams thing specifically sticks out to me because like everything that's come out kind of since the firing and how he was feeling, uh, 
and how much like he really didn't want to be there. It's all shit that you just can't say in a press conference. Like, so there's. I was wondering how close are we to official confirmation that he like was he wasn't winning, like he was losing on purpose. Did we get confirmation of that? I don't think we'll ever get full closure on that. But someone that like watched those games, it 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 feels like. Here's the here's the wild thing. There is a quote before um there is a quote before the season started. Um I think at the time my friend uh, Mike Curtis was covering the Pistons and I think that he asked Monty Williams about analytics and he was like I'm not I wasn't really a fan of analytics and then nice. he talked and then he was saying he's like then I started coming around to defensive field goal percentage and i was like oh my god it's gonna be a long <laughs> season i was like i was like that's your metric and i'm not the biggest i'm not i'm not the biggest analytics person i'm i'm interested in analytics i take a liking to like reading and stuff like that i'm not gonna yeah. be like this 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 i'm not gonna try, triangulate why but i'm like defensive field goal percentage buddy like not, like, not an like, exact one <laughs> like see, season season hasn't started yet i was oh my goodness um it was that kind of thing um but the thing is is that the thing that pissed me off also was that when Monty Williams, uh, they parted ways or whatever jargon they use, um, <laughs> Stephen A. Smith, Stephen A. Smith goes from he goes on the get up set, which is not his show. He just shows up there and he's <laughs> like, I, I forget. Well, maybe he's like, I think maybe it was breaking news or something, but whatever. Whatever show he was on, he was like, well, thank God Monty Williams uh, got out of there. He didn't want to coach in Detroit. And a lot of people and a lot of people ran with the fact that. Uh, it was like Monty Williams. He was given all like he he needs to find a better team. Like I'm like Monty Williams, Free like, him. <laughs> a, a pretty a pretty significant chunk of the problem. He's at least a third of the problem. Like, yeah, that was a, that was a thing where I was like, oh no, he's gonna be because they're gonna be like, oh look what he did with the Phoenix Suns or whatever. But then you have people be like the Pelicans, like that kind of thing. That's kind of made me mad too because I'm like this guy started. Isaiah Livers on purpose. This guy started <laughs> Killian, like, and I hate that Killian Hayes was the target for this season, but that was not the person to start next to Cade Cunningham. Even yeah. though, even though Monty Williams didn't have a lot of cards to play with, he was also playing the wrong cards somehow. <laughs> Yeah. Which also, like, it just became a rear rotation the entire season. So I don't know if he was losing on purpose, but he wasn't winning on purpose. Like, he wasn't <laughs> trying. To, it didn't seem like he was trying to win. So, Yeah, the Killian Hayes point is just, like, it's tough for Hayes specifically to get, like, the brunt of the hate because, uh, like, he was bad. He was bad. And I don't know. You're getting millions of dollars to be good. So, uh Criticism is warranted. I under, I get that. But, like, at the same time, the head coach, like, being like, no, you can do it. You're getting 30 minutes. Tonight's the night we turn it all around. Doing that every night for, like, 48 games or whatever until Killian Hayes was out of the rotation, that's just, um, yeah, like, that's setting him up for, like, a historical level of slander. And so, yeah, I think that's one place you can point to to be like, eh, how hard? I mean, that was, like – a straight up illogical decision like by every metric the eye test analytics very basic stats the Killian Hayes thing was not working at all and like he just wrote it out the entire season and so it's hard to uh have that be like your first step and then say oh he was trying his best to win games definitely every starting lineup graphic was a jump scare <laughs> because the Detroit Pistons started what they, I think the Detroit Pistons, they're, they're definitely up there for the most starting lineups that season. Um, yeah. You know, you'd you'd, pull, you'd see the graphic and be like, oh, Kevin Knox. Oh, okay. You'd be like, you see, oh, Lottery Isaiah pick. Livers. Okay, yeah. It's like, oh. Michigan I, uh, guy. <laughs> <laughs> you'd see you'd see all these people. Like, he's he, he insisted on starting Asar, Dern, and um, Stewart all together, which <laughs> I'm like, it, which was like also – to be fair, there wasn't much to to deal with, but there was also just like, oh my goodness, I, he, Monty Williams coached, and you saw, and you're like, oh, you definitely played in the 2000s, and like didn't leave. <laughs> like that was the that's what I like saw, and it was so hard each and every game, and it felt like at some point Troy Weaver had to like moneyball his way 
through some of these where it's like you can't play Isaiah Livers. I just traded him. You can't <laughs> play. Like it felt like that at sometimes. And a lot of the a lot of the positives that Monty the a lot of the few positives that came from Monty Williams, they always felt like accidents. <laughs> it, it always felt like an accident where it's like, oh, this lineup's doing well. That's because Killian Hayes is injured and you can't play him yeah. 30 minutes. Like that's what it felt. That's why people were like, oh, it seems like it seems like Monty Williams has like figured this team out. I'm like, wait till wait till those players are not injured anymore. They're gonna come back and everything's gonna just like fall apart once again. It was really frustrating to watch. That was the Jaden Ivy hot streak, right? Didn't it come when Kate or Killian was hurt or something and he was like kind of forced to play him? It was one of those things where it was like, it was like, you know, you could play them. Like It was either you could like stagger them or play them together. It was one of those things. And he was like, oh, I see. And I was like, oh, because like, it was like, it took you half the season. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> My goodness. Pablo, how, how are you feeling about where the Pistons are at? I think they, I think they made a lot of good, necessary additions. Like we we're we're below the floor of what a winning team can be, and we gotta we gotta just pour in some concrete. Like we're stealing concrete off the farm, so we're trying to fill in anything. Um, they got a bunch of mid shooters, but they had no shooters before, so we have to do something. Um, they had, like we said, a coach who was intentionally losing, who only took the job because they kept going. Hey, we'll pay you this much. He's like, no, I want to retire. We'll go this high. Okay, I guess I'll come. <laughs> I'll try and force you to fire me ASAP. I'll tell you what, the Bulls would not have fired him. They would have been like, we're riding through it. Did Did you see Kofi? You're a baseball guy, right? Did you see the the Reinsdorf article recently? No, no. Give me hip. He uh, basically they they talked about like how close the White Sox and Rick Hahn were to hiring AJ Hinch a few years ago, but Jerry Reinsdorf steps in at the end of the day, and they're like, yeah, he just thinks that Tony La Russa is a genius. Like, he's the oh smartest baseball mind in in history. So he's just like, yeah, we just got to get him. He's just, he, I, he just knows everything. So And, yeah. he, and he hadn't – he wasn't – Tony La Russa hadn't, like, managed in, like, a decade, right? So crazy. I, I think so. And he had a couple DUIs, and he was like a known racist. So, right. yeah. Whoa, whoa. I didn't realize you had to be perfect to manage a baseball <laughs> team, okay? No, I, didn't, I didn't realize uh, he was driving while managing. Yeah, he did. It, <laughs> two separate skill sets. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. But, but yeah, they, um, yeah, it, the Bulls would have never fired Monty Williams. So, that's that's a good sign, at least, that they're willing to take the L. Um, we did recently cover um, on the Patreon, patreon.com slash state league, uh, the Pistons owner, Tom Gores. Do you know about him? He, uh, how much of a... Yeah, he bought a, a stake in... <laughs> what did he buy a stake in recently? The Chargers? Oh, did he? Yeah, I thought he bought like a 27% stake in the Chargers or something like that. I don't so... know what... But we, uh, well, we uh, know, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's correct, Kofi. He uh, did. I saw that and I was like, oh, that's not good. We know he's got <laughs> stake in um prison telecommunications, so yeah, he, yeah, <laughs> he prevents prisoners from seeing their um from meeting in person with their loved ones and then he charges them for the video calls. Yeah, this is the type of person that we're dealing with, like, I, I <laughs> like. <sighs> Okay. Better than the Jerry th- Reinsdorf, though. <laughs> the crazy the thing about this is that during the streak is that the owner for a long time, the owner, the GM, radio silence. We didn't hear from <laughs> we didn't hear from them for months. And then we got this we got this article from Tom Gores. I think this was on the Detroit Free Press. It was like Tom Gores finally talks. And then that's where he said the we're doing a lot for the community thing. Mm. And we just ran, and we ran we ran with like the Pistons fan base was like oh we're we're losing but at least we're doing a lot for the community like, what do you mean what are you talking about like doesn't like all the NBA teams do that but they also win games or try to win games at least like oh, like what what are we doing here man oh man the, the the Celtics are like next to the Pistons stall at the soup kitchen just like what the fuck is going on over there. <laughs> Their, their knife skills are terrible. You guys fucking suck. Oh, man. I think oh. it was Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cavaliers. And now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like we might have missed the Cavaliers in the episode. We I did, think, yeah. Yeah. I think he – Um, one of the things he did was Detroit had like a big uh, 
a bunch of money they were going to put in like for for affordable housing and affordable business development or something he's like no give it to me and then he like built a bunch of high rises or something like that so yeah dan Goldberg fingerprints on short too wow god oh man all right i don't give a shit about what rich guys are doing um (laughs) That's not the point of this episode. If you want to hear about how bad every NBA owner is, that was our entire Patreon episode last week. We went through every bad thing that we could find on the billionaires that own the NBA teams. That was a good episode. One of them overthrew the South African IRS. Tune in. Yeah, (laughs) it's true. All right. Yo. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so where where the Pistons are at as a franchise, we're building culture – we're laying the foundation. We're just trying to not be the definitive bad basketball team this upcoming season. I would say that's like the clear goal for everyone involved. And it also feels like Pablo mentioned, like if you look back to last year and where the roster is at, um, it feels like there's a little bit more hierarchy here to point to, especially in terms of like uh, – what needs to get done or like where minutes and shots and things should be flowing where you have one group that is like established young guys you're looking to develop Cade Thompson Ron Holland Jalen Duran uh Ivy everybody and then you have a separate group of uh, like established veteran guys uh Tobias Harris obviously Tim Hardaway Jr. Malik Beasley Paul Reed and so I'm curious how like the shots are kind of going to get parsed out between everybody. Um, And I'm curious what the lineups are going to look like as well, because it feels like Pablo said mid shooters. I feel like Malik Beasley straight up a great shooter, everything else on the basketball floor, not necessarily like a high impact guy, but just in terms of like making Cade's life easier than it was last year. I think Beasley will be really helpful in that regard. And I think Tim Hardaway Jr. can be a really good shooter as well. So I'm just like, I don't know. Like if if Monty Williams was still here, I would have a ton of faith that we're getting like Thompson, Holland, Duran lineups where Kate oh, is just like driving into four people. <laughs> but, but, but with Bickerstaff and kind of the shit that we saw him uh, in Cleveland when Garland and Allen went down, like – he, he was really cool with uh, surrounding Mitchell and Allen with, like, shooters and running that kind of offense, and it was really successful. I I do feel like the floor for this team, if these guys are healthy, is a little bit higher. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I know a lot of people a lot of people laugh at the Tobias Harris signing, of course, because that's a lot of Sixers fans just, like, tr- processing the last <laughs> couple of years. And I'm I'm sitting here being like that's that's probably the best deal <laughs> we could have gotten because because one not only is it like oh say like, okay you got Tobias Harris that's fine we didn't give him the max yeah was, sca- was very scared of that <laughs> was very scared was very scared of, that, of giving Tobias Harris the max but no we got him on pre- like that's a not a, not a not the worst deal in the world we only got him for two seasons so if this really yeah. doesn't work out it's 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 wraps. But I think on top of that, you got a person that used to play for the organization but, like, wants to be there. I think that that's really night and day compared to, like, Boyan and Alec Burks. Where I'm like, I don't think mm. – like, those were, our vet, those were our vet presences last year. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, I don't want our vet presences to be that and then freaking Evan Fournier, who is now is, like, just talking <laughs> shit. I'm like – I'm like – Evan Fournier, I'm like, n- none of us wanted you on the team either. What did like, he say? That, he was like, I, I can't, he's like, I, it was so nice playing in the Olympics because we were on the, like, Pistons. He was like, he keeps talking about how bad the Pistons are and how he's, like, so glad that he's not. And, like, he's, like, <laughs> didn't want to be on a losing NBA team. And I'm like, we didn't want. He was dog shit I, for you guys also. Like, it's not like he was <laughs> playing well in a bad situation. He was horrible. Yeah, it was one of those things. Like, the thing is, is that when we got him, I was like, oh, okay, this is, like, a salary we're just taking on a bad salary and then Monty plays him yeah. okay like what, what do we what do we do like what he's anyway. one of your shooters 27 <laughs> percent from three by the way oh, my gosh. oh. Yeah. I, 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 I watch i was i went to state i went to crypto.com staple center and i went i saw that game where we lost by like 20 and 
in comes Evan Fournier in the first quarter. And me and like me and like two other Pistons fans, we go to the game, we look at each other and we're like, why is he in the game? <laughs> like we looked at and then like then Shake Milton comes in. And I'm like, when uh-huh. did we get we were like, when did we get Shake Milton? This is like very <laughs> it was it was such a whirlwind of just like when did we get all these players? But I was happy about signing Tobias Harris. I was so happy about getting Paul Reed. I was happy about getting Malik Beasley because Malik Beasley, I don't think, was that expensive. No, um, it's, he's on the minimum. He's like six million dollars. Yeah, like getting like getting these players. I, for me, it's not even if the shots go down right now. It's the it's the absolute just even the small threat of leaving a shooter open. I think is going to do wonders for Cade Cunningham because like. You know, Asar Thompson was shooting like sixteen percent on the corner three. And I know he's he, we have we got the shot doctor Fred Vinson now from the Pelicans. Mm. So I hope I hope that that like does something over time. And I feel like Asar Thompson's very coachable, so I'm not like mm-hmm. I'm I'm really optimistic about that. But yeah, last year it was like Kate Cunningham drives. Then you have Isaiah Stewart, Asar Thompson, and Killian Hayes, and. Kate, like the thing is, is that Isaiah Stewart did shoot pretty well from a standstill three, but like it still wasn't. They were like, "Oh yeah, we'll take that any day of the week." Yeah, it's not yeah. like, oh, don't let this guy get a shot off, right? Um, I think that 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 just that threat is gonna work wonders for what Cade can be able to do because Cade is being like put in like convers like he's being put in like comparisons where I'm like, "Wow, this PR is awful," you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's bad, you know. Oh man, yeah. What's his I contract? Like... 275, 285? Yeah, he, he just got the big extension. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I was gonna say I like uh Tobias Harris is interesting because he he might be like one of the only players in the league that has like a romantic memory of his time on the Pistons, where yeah, it was like especially just like slogging through all of this like Sixers, like and I saw uh, the other day, actually, he was like going back and forth with like Sixers fans in his comments on Instagram, just being uh-huh. like, just being like, shut up, you're stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> like, I don't know, very not super creative stuff, but like you could tell he was fed up with all of that. And so, like, him looking back these days on the Pistons, where he's like, hey, we were, we were only like six games under 500 when I was there. Mm. And people were saying I could have been an all star nearly. Like <laughs> my, my PR was better. No one fucking hated me. We were doing all right. And so, yeah, Who I think. There, is he there with Brandon Jennings and Drummond or, or no? Um, um, I the think year... so. I don't think he, I don't think him and Blake Griffin overlapped. No. I feel like, I feel like Blake, I think Tobias Harris on the Clippers at that time. Oh, he got, I think they got traded for each other, right? Maybe. Oh, maybe. Did they get traded for each other? That's possible. I'm looking at his basket. The full year he spent in Detroit uh, was 2016 17. So that's like KCP yeah, still there. Uh, yeah. Drummond, oh, wow. Reggie Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, that's a, that was a, that was fun. Like, Guys. We, didn't, we didn't win a playoff game, but that was fun. Like getting that's, there. 20, that's 23 year old Andre Drummond. So like he's he's young. He's promising. Oh, you got I mean wow. the future's bright at that point. And is that the Stanley Johnson year where he guards LeBron in the first round? Uh, it so. looks looks like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, things were looking up. You had him. The stopper. So, so much optimism. Van Gundy as well. I think was behind that team. <laughs> Form a fucking wall. We're just gonna build a fucking wall. Oh my god. Hey, say what you want about Stan, but he, he wasn't. He was a, a deflator of chemistry, like Monty Williams was. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think where the Pistons are at, it's, it's abundantly clear to everybody. And we've talked about this a little bit, but we could just lead right into the second question. Um. How do you feel about the offseason moves that uh, the franchise made? And I'd be willing – I I included uh, the Simone Fontecchio pickup in this category because he only ended up playing like 16 games. So it's almost an offseason move. And I feel like if you look at, I don't know, the big changes heading into next season, he's one of the guys I look to more to be like – an impact player in the 23 whatever wins we're, we're gunning for. I, I think Fonseca was one of like Troy Weaver's best moves. Yeah, no, it was like, I, 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 like I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, what? 
oh like it was we were so used to Trey Weaver being like oh maybe this center works maybe this guy like I'm and then I'm just, James okay. Wiseman he could he could come back here he could Damn be man. he could come back like the city we didn't we didn't even we didn't even t- I didn't even talk about James Wiseman oh my goodness that's the I'm wishing him the absolute best I I really do but he that was just not the situation for him um yeah getting Fontecchio was so important and then like it was cool because we cleared house and that could be good or that could be bad. And then Trajan Langdon comes in and I'm like, okay, just off the first, but no, see the Trajan Langdon comes in, but for a long time, there wasn't a press conference introducing him. Uh-huh. So Pistons fans were like, okay, is Monty Williams staying for one more year or is he going? And so that kind of like lingered. Because if like trade if Trajan stays, then Monty goes, and that means I feel like that I feel like we're not really serious about changing everything. So Monty goes, and then I forget who our candidates were um, for coaching. I think we were looking at James Borrego for a long time, mm-hmm. and um, I forget what other coaches. But yeah, I can't remember and, either. And like NBA coaching hires, you like look at. I I can't be like, oh, this guy's gonna be the absolute best person for the team. But then, but all I know is that I think Bickerstaff for me came out of nowhere. It mm-hmm. was like a, it was just like a Willie trial. I was like, oh, okay, Bickerstaff, all right, okay, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, like, I was I was surprised that Cleveland let him go. To be honest, so yeah. Also, yeah. Also, I I, I understand. It's one of those things where I feel like a like a franchise could be like super impatient being like, ah, oh, this is, this is the highest we, we've seen enough. This is the highest you can go. And then we're, we're I'm like, okay, well, we'll just take this guy who, you know, just one press conference. I'm like, Oh, he, he's excited about being here. He looks at Jade and Ivy and Kay Cunningham. He's like, I can do something with that. Like that's that, that means something to me, you know, like that's like a, <laughs> like, this, this means something. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I think that, getting Langdon, getting Fred Vinson, um, just getting just new faces to just erase the four years of whatever, you know, that happened. You know, we've made two former coaches of the year quit. Oh, who, like, wait, who, who's the other? Dwayne, D- Dwayne Casey. Damn. Oh. Like Dwayne Casey coached for three, like he was like, I don't think I want to coach anymore. I was like, damn, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't realize he quit. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, he, he he went, he just moved, he moved to a front office role, and I'm like, oh, man. oh, I see. And I was like, ah, man, that's that sucks. But um, you know, I I'm excited for bigger stuff because it's just like at the end of the day, it's something new. That's 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 the bar yeah. at this point. <laughs> Pablo, how you feeling? Yeah, I'm at this point. It's like the entire franchise has just really got to be an enabling Kate Cunningham, and they're doing the best they can to do that. So I'm I'm hopeful that uh, we can we can just see as as much uh, that things are as easy on him this year as they have been to this point because he's he's really been in hell. Yeah. Um. Do we think they could be passable defensively? I've like, like if you're, I don't know, if you're trying to take a step forward and be more competitive than they were last year, um, being horrible on, like just committing to one end feels like uh, the smart, the smart thing to do. And they were the 20. Okay. So the first half of the year last year, they were 28th uh, ranked defense. And then the second half, the last 42 games, they jumped up to the 22nd ranked defense. Oh. I think, I think Cade, I think Thompson, I think Fontecchio. I'm high on all of those guys as like straight up good defenders right now. I'm not sure. I mean, Holland is obviously an insane athlete, but like Thompson, outlier defensive impact for a rookie. I'm not expecting, uh, I'm not expecting Ron Holland to come in and do the same shit. Uh, but if but, he does anything, it'll probably be that. Yeah. Well, he'll run fast and jump high also. Oh, that'll be sick. Yeah, oh, yeah it's going to be fun. I, I think that the thing is last year, like you see all these athletes – and you on the on the on the on the court, and you're like, oh man, Asar Thompson. Seeing what Asar Thompson could do defensively, I was like, oh, this is like the coolest shit I've seen mm-hmm. in a minute. 
Um, I think I think it starts with Dern. Yeah, honestly, I, didn't I think bring I him think up to be nice. I I think it starts with Dern, and the thing is, is that Dern is so young. Where it, like any of these things, they are they're like it seems workable, and like. Pistons fans, there was some there's some guy on Twitter that made like a 30 minute Twitter video. He's Dylan on Fraud Watch. I was gonna yeah. ask you about it. <laughs> and I and I watched I, I and there's a lot that I want to like. I feel like during the streak, I feel like defense over time, right or whatnot, during that losing streak, you start to get less and less motivated on that end. Mm-hmm. which like totally totally checks out it's like because that's like a no matter what we do kind of thing but also mm-hmm. the thing is that Jalen Dern had like rolled his ankle like earlier in the mm-hmm. season and it was one of those things where I'm like all right is he not like being able to protect the rim because of the ankle is it effort is it whatever um is it a Monty Williams scheme thing who knows but I think I think the thing is that Bickerstaff is like a defensive guy in in certain like aspects, right? And I'm that's what I'm holding on to, being like, okay, well, we got Isaiah Stewart, love that. Um, you got Asar Thompson. You have you have play, you don't. It's not like you look at this roster and you're like, there are no defenders on this team, right? So I'm I'm excited for the fact that maybe it depends on like oh. Can this team be cohesive, or like cohesive, and like wake up every game wanting to like shut down the opponent, wanting mm-hmm. to be like take pride in that end? And I think that they can definitely do it. I think that they can definitely be they there can definitely be an improvement. And I also think that once we make the game easier for Cade and them on the off on the offensive end, I feel like who who's to say? If, in my opinion, yeah, yeah. Once they're not playing transition defense off of every brick that they miss <laughs> on the other end. Oh yeah. Every brick, every turnover. We were high in those. Oh, oh yeah. Man. Oh yeah. 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 It, it's, it's all, it's all bad. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think they could fuel each other in an interesting way because I, I also like uh, for like the fraud watch that Duran is on defensively uh, crazy athlete. And one of many very good, one of many guys who should be really good in transition. Like if you get stops and you get the ball out, turnovers, rebounds, all of that shit. Duran running the floor, Thompson running the floor, uh, Holland running the floor, Cade running the floor. All of those guys should be. Marcus really Sasser good. running the floor. Oh yeah, I oh, mean yeah. he's, he's the Bugsy Bogues under people's legs. And stuff. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, but like I think all of those guys, uh, their games lend themselves really well to playing offensively in transition. And when you're a dog shit defense, you don't get to do that that much. Uh, no. and, yeah. So I think uh, even even just like in the sense of like seeing the ball go in the basket more and like building confidence in that sense. Uh, I think getting out in transition would be really, really good for a team full of young guys coming off like a borderline traumatizing offensive season. Oh, for sure. It was, it was so rough. Like you saw the bleach report thing where it's like the showtime Pistons are back. And I'm like, those were like our only four fast break points of the year. <laughs> Not really, But it was, it was seeing like the Cade Cunningham windmill. And I was like, Oh, they're creating steals. And then like, they're getting out. And I'm like, yeah, because you guys got like a star who's like a great lob threat during great lob threat. I'm like, I love this. I love giving uh, an offensive engine, multiple lob threats. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Stewart. I don't, I don't count consider Stewart one of those, but that's fine. But um, it's one of those things where I'm like, that's so important to today's game. And um, like, that's going to be very important especially in transition getting those easy twos making the game just easier for you um yeah and that's the like that's really like important i think and i think it just starts with not turning the ball over because we i think we turn the ball over the most in the league or it's up there it's bad there was some just bad stuff did kate finish number one uh in per game in turnovers i yeah. don't i'm not sure i don't know if he met the uh i'm on basketball reference right now i don't know if he met the games requirement for it mm, uh see. let me let me pull it up real quick 
I remember going through those turnovers at some point last year because I was like, I wonder how like how bad could it be? And there's a lot of passes where it's like, this is crazy. Like he's just like, because he he's a very much like play at your own pace kind of guy, like slow yeah. nonchalant. And it was just like, you why are you why are you just ta- floating it into traffic where instantly someone swats it? It's like it's it's like he still thought he was in high school where he's just 10 feet taller than everybody. It was crazy at times. Yeah. It was the kind of thing where it felt like Cade felt, I feel like Cade felt too responsible for everything and everyone Mm -hmm. um, where it was like, Oh, I am the only source of playmaking on this team. Right. Because at the time Monty Williams didn't really trust Ivy to do any of that. Yeah. Um, and then Killian Hayes will just dribble the air out of the ball for nine minutes, like nine seconds, and then whatever, give it back to Cade. And then it would be one of those things where I'm like, oh, man, I, he's he. I like this new roster because I feel like it doesn't make Cade feel like he has to do anything and everything. I I honestly think that that's going to ch- do so much. Mm-hmm. So yeah. do you, do you believe in heliocentric? Cade, or are you like no? The best version of him is not that. I, I, I it's weird. It's like I see the guys of I see the trays, I see the Lucas, I see all of the people. Like the all thing was the offense right, really revolves around. I feel like Cade could be like a light version of that, where it'd be like okay, he can do it sometimes, but I really would have like want to get Ivy downhill on some pick and rolls, or like mm-hmm. dude, I don't, I don't want it to. Because last year, it felt like a lot of Cade, please help us, which led to one of the toughest shot diets that I've seen from a Pistons player in a long time in terms of just like Cade having to just do all these like long twos and whatnot. Yeah. I, I, I want I, I want the game to be a little bit easier for him in terms of the fact where it's just like, okay, maybe for this couple of times, Jaden Ivey, uh, takes the ball, goes like off the pick and roll, and then Cade's off ball. Like I, I need that. Like just switch up in terms of the fact where it's like, it's the thing where we asked of that of like Trey Young with uh Quinn Snyder and Nate McMillan, where it was like, dude, getting Trey off the ball just like for a couple of more plays a game is probably gonna work a little, like probably gonna work wonders. And then I think I don't know if the Hawks really abandoned that this season, but it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't unless the analytics where it's like James Harden and Mike D'Antoni was like, this is the best play we got. Like this is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pick and roll. This is like the 1.22 points per possession. Okay. We're going to do this every time. Unless it's like that level of an outlier. I, I like mixing it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, on the turnovers point, uh, he Cade would have finished the year tied for fourth with Giannis. If he like qualified um, games played wise, he was at 3.4. But oh, okay, I, that came yeah. down. It was like five at one point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When he yeah. came back from the eight, whatever straight missed games, uh, in the final 26 games of the year last season, he only averaged 2.9 turnovers to 7.8 assists. And I don't know, the final third of the season every year, it's like it feels like a lot of people pop off just because teams are checked out for one reason or another, especially in like the bottom of the Eastern conference. But uh, yeah, regardless coming down from that horrific start, like finishing at 3.4, I, I feel like the, that gives me more confidence in uh Cade's primary initiating ability. But yeah, I think uh, describing him as like Trey, Trey or Luca light, like if Trey or Luca loses a step offensively, but is like, right now a net positive good defender i feel like that's like an interesting angle that we haven't seen as far as like heliocentrism goes uh what it means when the guy running most of your plays is also like not a glaring hole on the other end of the floor um yeah yeah. and i think the thing here also that we um you know this was kate only kate's second seat like full season yeah, like Cade, like his this like his second season, he only played twelve games and got injured, and then we just shut him down. We're like, oh, whatever. Um, th- this was Cade's, so you still see one of those like, okay, you have the ball in your hands a lot. Not only do you have the ball in your hands a lot, you are you, we. This is like your Atlas holding up the world right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, not to mention it's like your Atlas holding up the world with 
uh, two shot chucking veterans being your best options. Um, Asar Thompson literally is being left alone in the corner because they're daring him to hit the rim. Like that was that was sad to to see. Also, Monty Williams not being creative with Asar offensively was really hard to watch. Also, um, yeah, making like put, treating Asar Thompson like prime Bruce Bowen was really sad. I'm like, just, <laughs> you know, like like there were some things where I'm like, make Asar a screener. That was like we let's just mm-hmm. do that. Get get Asar downhill. Like even the like Asar, the, like some he had some mid range like shots off like the dribble. I'm like, okay, that seems like your kind of thing. At like I'm fine with that. Whatever. Um, the lack of create the lack of creativity hurt last yeah. season for sure. It was just it was really bad. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to lose and just not see any any ingenuity on that end of the floor. If you're like down 15, yeah, run a, run a pick and yeah. pop for like a deep SR2 or something. Like let's, let's see what we have here as opposed to just like losing anyways and running. I mean, there were some moments with Alec Burks where uh-huh. he's like, he's like waving off Cade Cunningham in like big moments of the game. And it's just like, dude, uh, those, oh, those dude, are, the, yeah. So funny. Those oh, are the God. situations where, subbing in Tobias Harris or Tim Hardaway Jr. I mean, maybe maybe Tim Hardaway is going to want some big shots. Uh, that's fair. But I do feel like generally the veterans you have in place now are more like, okay, I'm coming from a place where it was Luca's team or Giannis's team or Embiid's team or whatever. I'm already in the headspace that, like, I'm just here to help out. Um, so I feel like that – that will not be quite as big of an issue. Alec Burks was fucking crazy for the first half of last year. That was for the, for, for the first half of last year. I was like, this, this is, if you're not, if they're not going down, what are you doing? Like that was like, he, <laughs> he picked it up enough to get traded. But the, those first weeks I was like, dude, him, him and Isaiah livers were just going tour date for tour date. It was really <laughs> bad. Yeah, it was it was really I was just like, oh man, I I don't, and I think that I feel like Livers was coming off an injury, like I think he had a shoulder. Also, half our team was injured at one point or something like that. Yeah. Um, but still, it was just one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, stop, please. And Mon- yeah. Monty gets him in the huddle, and he's like, those will go down. Keep taking them. It's okay, yeah. man. <laughs> Defensive yeah. field goal percentage. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. So the third question um, I have for you is what are the expectations around this upcoming NBA season? What does a disappointing season look like for this Pistons team versus a surprisingly nice one? Uh, a disappointing Pistons season is that we learn nothing. OK, I like and that. I'm talking I'm talking about this. This season is Intel gathering, whether it's like, OK, um, can Kate and Jaden Ivey play together play together or can they is staggering the best is jb bickerstaff going to actually experiment with this team um what does our rotation look like um we got fontecchio back which is dope how is he going to be used um i think that there are a lot of lineups you can potentially use with this roster um i'm also i'm also interested about uh bobby clintman you know, mm. seeing him in summer, seeing him in summer league, seeing his passing in summer league, I was like, oh, <laughs> I, like I'm like I'm like, dude, you might not see the floor for a while, but I'm excited. Like that was one that's of how things. you know you're um, down bad. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, oh, Bobby yeah. Clinton in summer league passing. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> so the, the, the thing the thing about me is that I, I I go crazy for good passing. So I was like, okay, that's <laughs> cool. Um, and then. There's a, there's an argument with the Pistons being like, can the Pistons do well with this core four of Cade, Ivy, Asar, and Dern? Um, is that is that a viable strat? And like people were talking, and the thing was like, we were talking about like Ivy potential trades, and I'm like, if we trade Ivy, I feel like whatever team is going to be like, this is the. Per- we can we can make this work. What do you? This is like, mm-hmm. it's like the fastest player in the NBA. What is wrong with you? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, 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 like it's one of those things. Um, I think that just getting a clear idea of or a clear just cohesive thought process of what the team is or like can this team play together, like that's fine. I don't really care about wins and losses. I don't care about hey, is Kate gonna genuinely improve? 
Um, is he not going to turn the ball over five times a game for the first half of the season? Um, are they going to share the ball? Is Asar going to improve on his like 19% three point shooting from the corner? Is mm-hmm. Jalen like th- those are these things where it's, it felt like last year, the Pistons, it felt like they were bad, but they also weren't learning anything where I'm like, this is really concerning. And it feels like you're building some bad habits. I, I just want good habits to be built. That's basically it. Yeah. I just got like a crazy flash of a timeline at the end of the season where it's like another 19 wins, but we're checking in and you're like, Asar wasn't scared to take him this year. He was, he was letting it fly this year. I know he was at 31%, but he, he was going. Asar Thompson, 31% is a dream. <laughs> that would be crazy. That's I, t- I take yeah. that. Oh, I man. take that's fine. That's Sorry, like Wright Brothers to the to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pablo, how do you how do you feel about all that? Do you have any thoughts? Well, well, first off, I do have a question for Kofi. Are you worried about Jay Nivey now that AJ Griffin has retired to become a missionary? Are we on missionary watch with Jay Nivey as well? <laughs> no, I, I look. I that's one of the biggest shocks of. Well, not like it just comes out of nowhere. I didn't know that that was like you know you never knew he had, like someone feels so strongly about that. To, oh, AJ or, Griffin. Or, yeah, didn't I? I didn't know. Oh, I knew. I put I accidentally posted a video predicting it last year. <laughs> he was he oh. was he was pretty active on Twitter. He was like, Oh, the okay, rap, yeah. the rapture's coming. If you go to Beyonce concert, you're going to hell. Stuff like that. Oh, cool. Jesus. Okay. Um. No, not concerned about that from Ivy. I think the concern would be if Ivy just again doesn't have like he leaves the season being like, um, what I'm really good at is not really they're not really letting me do here. That would suck. And then but, some other but the, rap, that, so. the rapture stuff doesn't scare you as much. No, no, no. Yeah, well, that's no. a normal <laughs> thing. To, that's a normal thing to think. Um, yeah. <laughs> My, yeah, I think uh, Pablo just put, the, just put yeah. the ball in the basket, man. That's <laughs> oh my god, Pablo, Pablo, like, I don't know, dissociates. He like hits on enough for the crazy shit to like still, he's just throwing everything at the wall and he's like, damn, AJ Griffin, I got his ass. So now, now, I <laughs> fire him well, off. Person who thinks the rapture is going to happen or like that Jesus is coming back. Like they could be tomorrow. Like, why mm-hmm. would you care about basketball? You got to be fair. like, you got to be like, screw this. I've, I've made enough. I'm going all in. Dude, there's nothing funnier than Pablo off season content. Yeah. It's, we need it. we need so it. funny. it's like, it's like, can the avatar win defensive player of the year? And I'm like, okay, sure. Cool. He's like, seven, he's like, he's like seven, four. He's I'll, like I'll watch. <laughs> Like I'll watch this whole video. <laughs> I did a religious one yesterday. I did. Have you guys seen what Brandon Ingram looks like? I did see that. Yeah, he looks no, like I Jesus haven't. now. Very Jesusy. Could it be him? We'll see. Um, <laughs> no, another and and AJ Griffin was a Duke guy, so maybe that's what he was talking about. Okay. Um, mm. But yeah, Jaden Ivey. I was super duper high on Jaden Ivey. He was my number one prospect in that class probably not going to work out um but we'll see it's like people don't realize that jade nivy is like he's he is like deer and fox like i don't know i don't know if he's derek prime derek rose westbrook john wall tier but he's like right down there he's insanely fast he can jump yep. insanely far um he's big for a guard he's got a long wingspan and he's not even a lost cause as a shooter, which uh, that was what excited me back in the day. Like a lot of those guys had zero touch. Like they were like a Sar Thompson kind of like John Wall, Rose and Westbrook. It was always like, OK, this is probably not going to work. And even th- they put together stretches. But um, yeah, they were never going to be shooters. I think Jaden Ivey has legit potential as a shooter. And it does. It was so annoying last year to see. He would have these stretches where he was playing really, really well, but then he would be pulled 
and Monty Williams would be like, this defense, not playing good enough defense. And, and that's why I'm playing Killian Hayes, which to be fair, the one thing Killian Hayes could could do was play decent, like okay defense. But then it's like Monty Williams is benching Asar Thompson later in the season. It's like that's that's the best defender on your team. What are you what what are you doing? So yeah. I I would love to see Jaden Ivey and a, and a renaissance. That's what pissed me off because Killian Hayes' defense wasn't that good. It wasn't life changing. (laughs) It wasn't. It what? It wasn't. It wasn't good enough to warrant that thought process. Like I was like, okay, Killing Hayes is. I'm like, okay, it's not Tony Allen here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's not like like Andre Roberson. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, (laughs) yeah, fine. Um, It was just like, okay, what are you? uh, Yeah, it's like if you're an office manager and you have an employee that's losing you like twenty five thousand dollars annually. And he's not like a good personality guy in the office, but like he no. lives next to a good, he lives next to like a good bagel shop or something. And so every Wednesday <laughs> you're like, Oh damn, Killian showing up with the everything dude, that fucking rocks. Um, yeah, it was just, a. Uh, I mean, you come back to it being an inexplicable decision like that, that much Killian Hayes. Like, that's why I believe this shit where he's like, I don't want to be here. I want to get fired. I, my contract's guaranteed. I don't care. It's just decisions like that. And so I think, um, yeah, this being an intel gathering season, I, I like that angle. Because um, one of my big questions is just like, who, what is the young core? And you answered it a little bit um, where I, I wrote down, is this like, do you consider it a, a quote unquote make or break year for Ivy and Duran? I don't really know what breaking would look like because I don't think they're going to like ship them off immediately or anything. The value would not be particularly good if the Pistons are like on track for another historically bad season. Um, But just like, yeah, I I don't know. You'll, you'll, you just got Holland brought in. If you're sub 25 wins again this year, you're probably looking at a chance at like another really good franchise uplifting player at the top of this draft whether or not that's like cooper flag or whoever um so yeah just like if it's if that fit isn't necessarily there if there's a lot more questions that you don't really feel have a good answer on this roster would you be comfortable starting to like take calls on ivy and duran or are you just are you writing it out for a few more seasons I think that this season, I think it, this will be better because I feel like Kay and Ivy now have better teammates. Yeah. Right? Where it's like, okay, well, it's hard to, it's hard for me to evaluate Kate and Ivy when there's literally zero spacing whatsoever. I'm like, you guys are, I'm like, this, you're not playing basketball. Like yeah. the, whatever the game, like you're playing like that that pickup game where it's like you're playing outdoor on the double rims and no one's even worried oh. about whatever. <laughs> like that's what that's what we watched. That's what I bought League Pass for last year. I feel like oh this God. year. I feel like this year where it's like we're okay, illegally let's... streaming. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh my God, Mr. Moneybags over here bought League Pass. <laughs> no, it, it, it it's the League Pass 2K bundle. Don't flatter me. Um, uh... Um, that's how they get you. Um, it, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, but if there's one player that you see this year that's just not cohesively working with them, I feel like we this is the year to f- like actually build evidence for that because you know, where it's like Jaden, you're just like, oh, Jaden, I pick and roll could be better. I'm like, your pick and roll partner was James Wiseman for that sample. I'm like, that's yeah. not the bu- like, that's not, it's <laughs> not Bradley, like, no. Yeah, it's like one of those things where it's just like if if I was in like a lab and someone was like, well, the elements you're using are not up to date, you know, like, can we really use these lab results? You know, it's yeah. one of those things. But I think that it's right now. We... Wuhan lab. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh man, settle down, dude. Gee, you're raunchy today. Jesus, you pissed me off. Yeah. Oh my god. I think that's a that's a fair response, though. Um, it's just kind of that's like what's weird to look at last year, um, and be like this year. If you lose a lot, 
the reasons that you're losing should mean something and like you should be able to understand it. The reasons you were losing last year are inexplicable. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, well, Alec Burks wanted it a lot down the stretch. Um, Fournier had a really bad night, all of that shit. Killian Hayes, 40 minutes. You can't survive it. Um, yeah, like the reasons you were losing last year amounted to no information. So intel gathering based, based response. Um, there were There were games last year where Monty Williams would play 11 people. Just because. <laughs> and you're like, do we, like have, do we have eight good guys on this roster? What are we doing uh, with 11 out there? 11 people is nuts. Like, that's <laughs> that's like all-star game level stuff. Like, like what are we doing, man? Like, we, we just want to have everyone has fun. Everyone participates. Dude, even the, the, dude, the Malachi Flynn 50-point game was like the worst oh, thing. Oh, yeah. That, because, Why? Because that means he deserves so, minutes for the rest of the year now. Dude, I was so scared that that meant we were going to re-sign him. <laughs> like, that, that's that's the level of, like, that's the level of ineptitude and, like, just getting absolutely suckered that that front office was be like, oh, wow, 50-point game. There might be something. I was like, yeah. oh, It just cuts to Monty right? Williams' permanent marker on the whiteboard. Microwave scorer, Malachi Flynn. <laughs> oh, my God. And then he went, like, what? for 13 the next game i was like ah there we go We're law back. of averages yeah were yeah. you watching that game when it happened uh no i was watching i watched the first half and i turned it off i was like no this is, this is, this is. <laughs> like and this is like a, it's it's i think it's the hawks and i'm like it take it takes a lot for me to turn off a hawks game because trey young's my favorite player but i was mm-hmm. like i can't well, i can't watch this i'm sorry this is bad <laughs> <laughs> oh man um i have since you you mentioned the win totals, I have a blind ranking scenario. So I, I'm gonna I have five things here, and I want you to just rank them one through five. You don't know what's coming next. Um, the first one is that the Pistons win 30 games next year. I put that too. Okay. I think I think I think 30 games is that is going to be like, oh, cool, because, again, this is a not a brand-new team, but it's a team with a lot of new faces, new coach. If we get to 30 games this year off of that, oh. I, think that, that, that I think that means that there's, like, a lot of optimism and a lot of optimistic things happening where it's like, yeah, we're not going to be competing with the Milwaukee's and Boston's and whatever, but, like, there's something, there's something like, positive help happening. So, yeah, too. Yeah, what did they okay. finish with last year? How many? Four, 14. Hey, but yeah. the the, in, the injuries, man. The injuries. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We Monty Monty Morris didn't play, man. He could have saved the season. <laughs> oh man, all I right, like Monty right. Morris. Don't get me wrong, though, but that that was what we were banking on. Him and Joe Harris, who then re- I think retired. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think he just. <laughs> <laughs> is Harris he really retired? I I don't know. I feel like I feel he like is, he's just yeah, like yeah. yeah yeah. I'm out. I'm like okay. Oh, <laughs> that wow. was our bit. That was our big off season get, by the way. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's at number two. Uh the next one I have is that Isaiah Stewart finishes this season on the Pistons. Ooh. Um I'm gonna go three or four. Like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go mm. like three or four. I think I'm gonna go four. Cause I feel okay. like that's not like I like Isaiah I like Isaiah Stewart as a backup five. I liked when he was used as a backup five. I do not like when Isaiah Stewart is put next to Jalen Dern as a, a starting four. And the 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 Thompson Stewart Dern fit was horrendous. That was like <laughs> so, like that was that was really it's a tough watch, I think. Um but if Isaiah Stewart because I think he was in talks last year too. I mean, I would miss him, but at the same time. If if the Pistons or Trajan Langdon see something, another opportunity, um, it depends on what the package is. I could like be fine with it. If that makes yeah. sense. Like like he he seems like a Detroit guy where he's like, Yeah, he really like encompasses Detroit basketball, undersized, whatever. He's blue um, collar, baby. Yeah. He gets, he gets he like works hard, willing to willing to willing to run through eight people to fight LeBron <laughs> to fight James. LeBron James. To, to fight the face of the Detroit league. Are you know- everybody. Dray- Draymond, Draymond doesn't want smoke with him. Like it's, it's, 
like that's Detroit basketball. That's what that's like the cool part of Detroit basketball. But like if he if he goes, I'll be sad. But it wouldn't be like the worst. Okay. Out of the out of the potential five, so I have him at four, I guess. Um, the next one I have is a Cade Cunningham All Star appearance. What's what's the likelihood Ooh. of that? Oh, like likelihood? Well, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. Like how 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 much do you think that will or will not happen? It's tough going. It's tough because it's like those Eastern Conference guards. Because I think Lillard's going to get fan vote no matter what, which. I don't think he should have been a starter last year, which kind of sucked. And then you got Brunson, you got Trey, um, Josh potentially, Lam- potentially Lam- <laughs> Lamelo, Halliburton. So like, it's one of the, it's like those things where like Cade has a bunch of people if he's if he's considered backcourt. Um, yeah. Cade Cade has a bunch of people, but if Cade's in like the conversation, I'm fine with that. Like okay, Cade's a so, I'll, so I'll put it I'll put it at three because i don't think it's gonna like happen i think there's a lot of people behind oh then didn't even mention donovan mitchell um like they're they're a bunch of they're a bunch of eastern guards where i'm like okay i can see that there's a hierarchy here for sure um and that's always going to be a fight but if k cunningham is like in the conversation you get if you get one of those um if you get one of those like nba university posts where it's like watch out for k cunningham he is making it i'm like oh okay yeah there you go okay Not, not bad so i'll put that at three all right uh, the next one I got is Asar Thompson records a five by five game. Ah, well, that has to be that has to be one. I can't put that at f- can't put that at five. Okay, I think I think that that would be like a really cool thing. I don't think that he's not the most likely person in the league to do that, but um, he's up there for sure. He's on the short list. Yeah, he's on the short list. It's like yeah, it's on the short list. I think he could pull it off for sure and i think that that would showcase how far he's come versatile versatility wise in terms of like just like oh cool and that would mean that asar thompson would be trusted to like handle the ball on offense a little bit more mm-hmm. in certain situations so i'd be like okay good job bigger set that's fine he doesn't have well, to like he's a good passer when when he yeah. is allowed to yeah well like, when he's not when he's not standing in the corner just doing nothing like that like I feel like good things could definitely happen. So I think that that would be a really cool thing for that. Yeah. What's what's the fifth one? Um, it was I was trying to bait you. It's it's a Tim Hardaway forty point game. Uh, so if, oh. you put, if you put Thompson five, that would have been one. But you're too smart for me. No, that no, could happen not, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like that'd be funny. Like, the thing about Tim Hardaway Jr. is that like, like a lot of Mavericks fans were like, "Good riddance." Like, well, I'm like, I'm like, oh, uh, here's some optimism. Like, you know? <laughs> like, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, dude, I had to watch Isaiah Livers shoot threes for half, like a half a season. I welcome Tim Hardaway with open arms, brother. Like, it's yeah. So yeah, you know, this is the this is a level that we're at though. So yeah, it's very yeah. um. Yeah, like I guess Overton window is the phrase where it's like, uh, like the way the the political co- country continually gets dragged to the right, the Pistons are continually dragged down into like bad players on their teams, and so then like you get the you get the worst player on the Western Conference uh, team that went to the finals that shows up on the Pistons and it's like holy shit. We, this guy's not even starting for us. We're winning forty games, dude. This is crazy. Oh my god! <laughs> it, and it's like that thing where it's like, yeah, we're not a we're not a big free agent destination, but like, we we'll take we'll take whatever teams like. But that's that's also what has led us into trouble back in the day. But like, mm-hmm. that's that's all we can do at certain points. But like, it's that, and then Trajan Landing getting creative, you know. So I, I trust that he can do it. So. Yeah, I was going to say with like uh, the Asar Thompson on ball stuff, it's really funny because you guys are like, well, he's a good passer. And I was like, yeah, Monty Williams involving him in like no pick and roll, like no screening stuff because there's famously no opportunities to be like a cool passer in the short roll. Like when you get it and like the entire defense is moving around you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just keep him in the corner. Who Who needs those possessions for him? Yeah, that 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 was like the f- a frustrating part as well, where it's like, okay, if this, all right, you know, you know his strengths and weaknesses, yeah. you know that <laughs> we we all know this. Like, it's not like it's not like he came into the draft being like, 
oh, this guy, we don't know what his tried in it. We like we know what he can give to an NBA team right now. And Monty Williams is like, no. We Who's this mystery it? man? <laughs> That's Monty Williams <laughs> on, on the bench. <laughs> Let's see what this whippersnapper can do. <laughs> Oh, that's so fucking funny. Yeah, dude. Um, Tragic stuff. So, all right. That, that runs down. Asar Thompson, 5x5 five five is number one. Pistons win 30 games is number two. Cade All-Star appearance, number three. Uh, Stewart is a Piston at the end of the year is number four. And then the Tim Hardaway Jr. 40-point game rounds us out at five. Although I do think that's still in the cards. Like, uh, come come like late February, just uh, I, th- I think – you might be seeing like microwave Tim minutes, definitely. Um, all right. The fourth question I got for you. This one, it's gonna be tough to answer just because like gathering intel isn't necessarily like making trades seasons. Um, but is there a mid season trade that you would want or expect the franchise to make? Is there a bad salary you want to take on for picks? <laughs> <sighs> Probably, maybe a guy, believe. maybe a dunk dunk contest champion. Maybe he was like twenty. Tw- his peak was like twenty seven points per game, and then like I don't know, they traded oh for Dude, or the, something. I don't the, know the Levine talks, man. That <laughs> shit last year. Those were fun, right? Like that was those were so <laughs> weird because the the market kept going so low to virtually <laughs> yeah. not existent, and just sitting here being like. And I'm, I'm sitting here in basketball hell being like, I watched Levine drop like 48 or 50 against us. Like, what could, what could be the, what could be worse than this? Like, is it, you know, um, I, I think that if Stewart, I, I would not be surprised if a playoff contender looked at Isaiah Stewart and was like, this guy can be definitely valuable. So that's why when I was like number four, where I was like, I totally could understand him being like plucked or something. And, if the Detroit Pistons were like, yeah, Isaiah Stewart's a good player. You're not in our like future plans. Like I totally understand that. So that would be my kind of thing. Um, But that's probably the only one that makes like the only one where I'm like excited. Cause I like Fontecchio a lot. It's like, the thing is I like, Oh, mm, I, I am very curious about Sasser's future with this team. Mm-hmm. yeah i'm very i'm very curious like i'm thinking about it it's like it's like we talk about k we talk about ivy I, I, we don't we haven't talked about like sasser that much where it's like one of those things where so is he not I, stamped as young core yet i don't think he's i don't think he is i think that he had like some good showings like at mm-hmm. the beginning of the season but it was also just like so hot and cold and the fact that like detroit detroit like i think I think going by our roster, Jaden Ivey's our backup point guard right now. Yeah, like I wouldn't consider I wouldn't consider Sasser that, um, which is also kind of an interesting thing. But if Stu, I wouldn't be surprised if like the Pistons look at Sasser and it's like you're like there's like there's a feature for you in this league, but not in our team. Like I can definitely see that because I saw that a lot last year, being like like a lot of players. Like I think on the team, I'm like, oh, you could play somewhere else but i don't think that us is the best situation for us but i i do i am very like what had a sasser i know i for sure know if jay well a bigger sack plays an 11 man lineup this is not a conversation we're gonna have but yeah. um that's the, the the thing is is that once you cut the rotation down and you see like a like players being the odd, odd person out i'm like oh man what like i like sasser i do but like if you're not in the vision then yeah do we yeah. do we need your twenty minutes a game, or can we like divide that up between like Ivy and Cade and whoever, and just yeah, so yeah. Sasser stuff because like I don't know, he feels kind of like Trey Man to me ish a little bit. Um, obviously, the, it's a little bit harder to crack like the Thunder's rotation than it is to crack the Pistons, and so um, I think that might be a testament to like where each player is at. But it does just kind of feel like you see him get in. Um, and you see him have flashes, but it's very hard to like justify carving out um, a real role for him, even even to like gather intelligence, because it's just more important to gather intelligence on uh, Ivy. And even like if you wanted to experiment with like Thompson running uh, the offense or being an initiator for like three or four minutes at a time, 
I would be more interested in like what the results of that look like than necessarily what, what we're getting out of Marcus Sasser, even though I do agree, like offensively, he's cool. Um, the upside is there and the flashes are nice, but it's, it's just tough. Um, I think, did, I just, I just think go, he has sorry. a lower, I just, I just think he has a lower ceiling than yeah. the other younger players. And I wouldn't want us to like lower the other players ceiling just so he could. Yeah. It's one of those yeah. things. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird. Like sometimes it, it really just like puts into perspective how small he is when you get him next to Ivy and it's like, Oh, well, Ivy's like six, four. Ivy's not like, he's not massive. Um, but like you put him next to Sasser and it's like, Oh, he's fucking huge. Like he's like an NBA guard and Sasser just yeah. like, doesn't really, uh, look the same. You mentioned that you like, you like Fontecchio. And so you brought up this idea that like a contender would look at Isaiah Stewart and they would maybe take a swing on him. Would you be mad if the Pistons allowed that to happen to Fontecchio barring it's like a clear overpay where like a desperate contender is giving up a little bit more than Fontecchio is worth to get him. Like, would you be upset if they uh, moved off of Fontecchio after picking up a guy who is like, like you said, one of like the few clear good positive moves that's been made by the franchise i would be i would be sad don't get me wrong um but if the pistons looked around again and were like okay fontecchio is a good player is he the future right you know i think that also ties into the tobias harris only being here for two years where Mm -hmm. it's like um they're not the same player obviously don't get me wrong but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, Fontecchio's here. He did a lot of good basketball things on a on a like bad basketball team. Like it was a bright spot. Um, and seeing him play just was just like, oh wow, this is an NBA player. You know, yeah. I like this. I feel I like the 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 draw. But like, if the Pistons again, if they look at um, Fontecchio, I think this is the year to look and be like, hey, you, you might you might be a good player, but if if you're not in the the future thing then we can we gotta max we gotta get this as much value back as we can i totally understand that i would be sad though is he he's 26 uh maybe he might be 27 at the start of next season so it's just like a it's not impossible for him to stick around there but it it, the timeline is just like a little clunky where the year that they're even like starting to think about being really competitive he'll probably be like 30 at that point yeah, so I and, and the timeline might not align, but I I like that he's there in the meantime, just to yeah. like be an NBA player where it's like, oh okay, Fontecchio, you're like you don't need the ball, like you're you can be you have you get value if you don't like get your touches or whatnot, and I'm like okay, I, we need those kind of players too. I, I'm like happy to have them for sure. Yeah, Pablo, what do you think? Um. 43% on six attempts from three in Fontecchio's 15 games uh, for the, for the Pistons. Um, I'm wondering is, do you think, is there any nostalgia for the losing streak of last year? How do, how do Pistons fans feel about that at this point now? I, it's like, it's like when, uh, it's like when God sent the flood, you know? Oh, nice. Oh. Back, back to the rapture, you know, it's all full circle <laughs> around there. It's one of those. I feel like the fact that if the I feel there's a part of me that believes that if the losing streak didn't happen, if this didn't become a national news story, if the Detroit Pistons losing streak wasn't on NPR, like that was a, it was an article. <laughs> the streak was on the streak was an article on NPR, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is go, this is global. Okay, gotcha. I feel like if we didn't get this much attention as a basketball team. We wouldn't. It wouldn't have put pressure on Tom Gores. It wouldn't have been put pressure on people. Like I feel like, if we didn't have a losing streak, still won fourteen games. I feel like a lot of people would still have their jobs at this point because they wouldn't get the like all this attention and being like. Because the thing is, is like there are a lot of times where you could be a bad NBA team, but like be like just in oblivion no one's looking your way you're bad you won 21 games like and only your fan base is the one that's like really noticing it's like oh man there's not really that much but whatever but then when you see uh the detroit pistons blow a 20 point lead to the boston celtics um 
and like still complete the and like the streak continues and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, is that the Pistons, of course, you know how a lot of these these smaller market or bad teams don't get that many national TV games. We got flexed out of two national TV oh games. My God, we got the um, what game was it? The the, the Lakers Pistons game was supposed to be on NBA TV. That got flexed out. LeBron, Ooh. like the uh, like Le- <laughs> the, the Pistons were so bad that LeBron was involved in a game that got flexed out of NBA TV. Oh man, dude! Like That's that happened. Really that happened multiple. Like, all of our, all of our, um, yeah, all, like all of our national TV games got like. Fl- I didn't know you could do that. To be honest, I didn't know you could like that. That could happen. Um, but yeah, it, it's one thing. It was good that we got all this negative press, this negative attention, and the wing stop thing was very helpful as well. Like that was like seeing it, seeing it turn seeing it turn into a meme seeing all the people like it it went viral like it, it like mm-hmm. seeing all of that being like hey the entire NBA world sees you Tom Gores Troy Weaver like this has been like you do a little bit more digging you've been doing this for four years like yeah. I think that was it was one of the best it was like it was so sad to watch for the players. But I think for the organization, it's the it was probably the best thing that could have happened last season. It's like if we're gonna lose, we gotta lose in the historic fashion, or else it's gonna be business as usual. What was the wing stop thing again? I forget the specific. Um, when the Pistons won a game, they got uh, five free uh, boneless wings. Was it for every win? Yep, for every win. And then nice. um, so every so every finals graphic, every final graphic for the Pistons had a wing stop logo on it because you know, you know how uh, like the yeah. you, like you know NBA teams they have like a starting lineup sponsor, or, like a final sponsor, you know, it's one of those things. So people were noticing we're like, oh man, this wing stop promo is not happening. Like, <laughs> for, like for for the months this wing stop pro it was the funniest <laughs> thing. Like that was so funny. Like I like I I feel bad for this team this is tremendous content you know it's one of those things that's yeah. such cool. a great deal for them they don't have to spend the money to give away the free wings and they're getting like massive publicity that's so that's so wildly like the best promo that you quick, could do uh quick math on that that's 70 wings for the whole season <laughs> um oh yeah yeah 70 i think they're i think they're boneless wings too they're not even like oh my god like small yeah. Um, all right. All right. So this is uh next question. A little, little bit more geared towards the uh, the covert ops intelligence nature of next season. Mm. Which player are you most looking forward to seeing progress this upcoming season? Oh, for me, it's it's not even a player on my team. It's Jalen Johnson. Oh, OK. <laughs> I, I really like yeah. I don't look. Oh, I love watching the Hawks. Like I'm guilty. Like I, I, I think that I think that people are counting out the Hawks because DeJounte Murray's gone. And I'm like, I think this team is going to have like, just be a little bit like seeing Jalen Johnson, like his talent in the short role passing his like, you know, and this season was cut back through injury. Like that's fine. Like that happens. But I, I am excited to see what Jalen Johnson does with Trey young. And because there was a, there was a dunk central thing yesterday. Cause of course they're the pinnacle of NBA media now. Mm-hmm. Um, they had, uh, uh, they, I, I could talk about that for, I could talk about that for days. That's, that's crazy. Um, they had the, like the new Hawks duo and it's like Trey Young and Arisha Shade. I'm like, that's not the duo. Brother. Settle uh, down. Like, <laughs> he's, in, he's in the corner. That's not the duo. <laughs> but I, I feel like Jalen Johnson was, is someone where I'm like, this, this is very fun. You know, give him like quits, Quinn Snyder offense. Love, love watching that. Um, so yeah, Jalen Johnson. I, I I don't really. I'm watching. I watched a lot of Pistons games last year. I it took up a lot of my time. Hawks games were my palate cleanser because like yeah, they're they're gonna. I don't like if a team I don't care about scores 140 points a game, then that's fun for me. I don't care about Absolutely. this. I don't care about this team. But like yeah, that was fun for me. That's a based answer. Um, yeah, the Hawks are interesting because it just feels like there's it's this team that kind of uh, the way you said like a, a team might be bad and exist outside of the consciousness of like everyone besides their fans. Uh, it feels like the Hawks are on the cusp of being kind of good and they exist outside of like NBA fans minds where, yeah, I think a lot of casuals are like, Oh, they lost 
uh, DeJounte Murray. They lost 20 points, eight assists, uh, like good three point shooting or whatever. Of All course, they're going to second team. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> the world beater, DeJounte Murray. Of oh course, they're going to take a step back. Whereas anyone who even like kind of knows basketball is like, oh, that was like a horrific fit. It just was bad. Um, and like addition by subtraction, they're one of the easiest teams to point to. And Jalen Johnson is a very similar thing where I feel like if you asked most people who are just kind of like casually into the NBA, he's not someone who comes to mind as like promising young forward in the mold of like Scotty Barnes and Paolo Bancaro. Like he's, as far as name recognition goes, different stratosphere than those other two guys. But I think he could have, yeah, a very similar season to what we saw out of those two, maybe last year. I don't know if he'll necessarily be like all-star forward 22, nine and five on good efficiency, but I think he'll be really solid. And I think he'll contribute to a Hawks team that has a lot of chance to, uh, to bounce back. Pablo, you got any Jalen Johnson thoughts? I know you're Trey pilled. I am Trey pilled. Jalen Johnson is so good. Um, yeah, I think not, nothing that you two haven't said. Um, I do want to. I do want to ask you though, Kofi. What were your initial thoughts for the Zach Lowe thing? I just looked uh, at your YouTube channel. I don't think you posted a video talking about it yet. I love all your videos where you talk about the the sports media landscape. What was your What were your takeaways? I, I appreciate that. I haven't like. Yeah, I was um, when the Zach Lowe thing happened. I was like away from my setup, right? So I don't. I don't really when I when I travel or whatever. I don't really like record a video like if it's like that. Um, oh my goodness um it that just showcases i feel like what espn really values um and the thing and that makes me a little bit sad because if if he's not the and i know he they they said in the athletic they're like oh espn didn't want to play like pay him like seven figures or whatnot well he says his salary was already like seven figures which i'm like yeah that checks out he's on tv he has one of the top podcasts in the world you know Mm -hmm. but I'm also keeping in mind that Stephen A. Smith is mid-contract negotiation because his contract runs mm-hmm. out and he's going to be asking for 25 million a year. Oh um, wow! So that's that's what he's that's what he's um, and part of me and part of me as someone that is in sports media is like I want everyone to be able to get their money. Yes, these are mm-hmm. billion dollar these are billion dollar corporations. Mm-hmm. Like it shouldn't it shouldn't like you getting this much money shouldn't mean that other people are are not whatever. But I think that that showcases the fact that um, ESPN has realized that they can cover basketball without covering basketball. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 wild seeing all of these basketball enthusiasts, you know, um, be able to. You you can talk about narratives. You can talk about um, just like the you play the hits and be fine. And I feel like. Um, Zach Lowe is one of the few people on ESPN. I mean, and there are a lot of people on ESPN that do like basketball. Shout out Monica McNutt. Um, you know, there's people like that on, but they they seem to give more preference, like not preference tre- treatment, but they're like looking more towards whenever there's something big happening. They're like, what does Perkins think about this? What, what does Kendrick Smith? Perkins think? Oh um, my god! And and it it feels like you know, I it it makes me kind of sad because it's like you see that NBA media has a lot of people in media that like really care about this stuff and i feel like most of it's in the youtube space um you know and it's like okay if this if you see how this youtube media space is thriving right but then you then as soon as it touches tv people are like no that can't possibly work and i'm like okay fine um but i think what what's left tim tim legler whiteboard segments on scott van pelt is was gonna be like that's gonna be like the last like I feel like when it's all said and done, that might be like the last thing. Not, not, not to be like apocalyptic about everything, but like seeing, <laughs> but seeing, but seeing Zach Lowe just get la- like laid off. In, yeah. I'm like, okay, wow, okay. If if he if he's not what ESPN wants, then I. Also, the fact that they're trying to replace Woj with non basketball insiders, I think, also speaks to the fact yeah. that, um, that just shows that I think ESPN just values the being first to the information not the actual basketball information which is like kind of weird but hey yeah um you 
first of all, you're way better than we are in terms of like, uh, not to be apocalyptic about it. If you gave me and Pablo like 20 <laughs> minutes to like riff on the state of like the NBA TV media landscape, you would think that like it's like toddlers with microphones up there like drawing and crayon like we we're pretty doom pilled about like especially when you say i want everyone to get their money um same exactly uh but it definitely feels like like uh ESPN is deciding like only one of these groups can get money and it's like cigarettes or like fruit like, like, <laughs> like Zach, Zach Lowe is like consistently cranking out like some of the best uh just like analysis entertaining too like it's it's not like it's like super dry or boring or anything but then yeah he's going up against uh like Kendrick Perkins talking about why Jason Tatum is in a pure hooper or something and that gets like 10 million views on YouTube and it's just like okay well like business wise i understand why a company would go for kind of like the the short term dopamine effect that comes from that style of content but it just sucks that like in in the macro sense you're kind of building an industry that doesn't cater to people who have like been interested in the sport for more than like eight months once once you like really start to like get into basketball yeah i'm sure like the Stephen a smith of it all that's like interesting and fun uh but like once you kind of care more about like the intricacies of the game it's like clear that the zach lows of the world are are better for the industry and it just feels like they are kind of being pushed out a little bit it, it doesn't look like it feels like it, the basketball coverage right now. It doesn't feel like you're at a place where you could like learn. Now, there are some segments where it's like Shanae Gumake will get to like the smart board and talk about the basketball, like why this team is doing so well. And it's like good analysis, but it's not like the main it's it's treated like like the peas of like a dinner dish. It's not like treated like the chicken or the yeah. mashed potatoes. It's like treated like this. It's like the peas. And so whatever. I'll get to um, them if I'm still hungry. <laughs> at the end of this I know it's you good know. for me, but I, I'm not that into it. <laughs> and I, and I, and I see, and I see that I see um, the NBA coverage compared to ESPN's like NFL coverage. And it's just like night mm -hmm. and day because you have like all these football players, even if they were good or not, all these football players, NFL Live will have a segment where they just like go on a tangent for seven minutes being like, here's this, this, this. I'm going to actually like do the diagrams and stuff like that. But I feel like that happens more often than like NBA where it's like. And I think that we're reaching like pure scoopification of stuff where, you know, ESPN going to get Woj show that they valued, hey, uh, these trade rumors or whatnot. And I feel like it, it kind of puts the regular season interesting stuff to the wayside because all we talk about is like trade rumors or free upcoming free agency when it's like december um people's contracts coming out or like ex and stuff like that and it feels like that has kind of taken um a toll on just a celebrating the regular season celebrating all of these like all this good basketball that we get to watch where it becomes like we try to get these people out of small market teams and like go like hey this guy you know the la the la photoshops and the miami heat photoshop players like that doesn't come from nowhere right that that comes from just a lot of people being like oh maybe they want to play somewhere that's like and I it feel was like literally the jump right that mentioned anthony edwards like after the fiba last year they're like is is should he be in minnesota or is that too small and i i feel like seeing that compared to uh NFL coverage where they'll talk about the Packers. No, they'll talk about the Packers lines. They'll talk about whatever team, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a part of me that also thinks I'm um, like, if fantasy basketball was more uh, widespread, would that change the like coverage? Cause I feel like fantasy football does a lot to help with the media coverage around the entire league because people are interested in the entire league where they're interested in their player playing. Whereas fantasy basketball, I feel like isn't that isn't as popular um, year wide year round. So, I mean, I wonder if that actually has like an effect on like the media landscape where it's like, no, these people only care about the, these 
six or eight teams, you know? Yeah. Um, it's interesting your point about uh, NFL players, ex players, like going on a seven minute tangent. And that's like your example of like smart, intelligent analysis of the sport. Because I feel like for NBA, for the like to play professional football, uh, just like the way the sport works, uh, you have to understand your role in the scheme so much more that like it's it kind of forces you to understand uh yeah like how how to draw uh, up and explain what's happening in a certain play way more i feel like the ex nba players that major networks employ generally speaking you let them go for five minutes it's going to be some of the most insane shit you've ever heard like it's guys who are just like uh yeah like we we talk about it a lot nba players tend to think the way that they played uh is the best way to do it and so like if you let if you let um andre iguodala talk about scotty barnes or whatever um or if you let perkins talk about whoever you want it's just like it doesn't always result in like jj reddick level analysis of what's happening because they didn't necessarily dominate the sport through uh an understanding of like the x's and o's which is not to say that like we're smarter than them or anything like the average yeah. nba player knows infinitely more than we do it's just like in terms of breaking it down for fans i never feel like i come away from an NBA player going on a tangent and I'm like, Oh, okay. I get what that guy was talking about. Like most of the time it's just like, what the hell did I just listen to? And, and that was why about that is it comes out. Oh crap. I'm getting a Charlie horse. Oh, carry on Kofi. I don't know. What <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. Uh, I, but that's why I think last year, like, even though we didn't get that podcast for a long time, the mind, the game podcast. Yeah. Like the, just, just those episodes that we got, I was like, if anybody's going to be able to turn this tide, it's LeBron and JJ Reddick. Right. And the fact that I, I, the Lakers, I hope that the Lakers are good because if they're not, then we lost that podcast for nothing. Um, yeah. But um, it was cool to see like JJ Redick and LeBron James. Yeah, they they were drinking wine, talking about like basketball stuff that like they nerd out over. But the interesting part about that was that there was an intro to like every uh, video being like hey, JJ Redick sitting you down and being like, "Hey, you are going to hear these terms throughout the episode. Here's what they mean. We don't want you to be lost, like completely lost, you know? Because again, it's a it's the sport at the highest level. You're gonna you're they're gonna have to pause and be like, what was that?" Uh, it's very jargony. Yeah. Yeah. But at least they did they put the effort into uh explaining the jargon enough to where you're like you sitting down being like, okay, I'm here to learn. You guys are not just here to like talk on a higher level. You're here to actually make this like sound uh, like approachable. And I appreciated that for sure. Yeah. Um Pablo Charlie Horse gone away. You got any thoughts? Yeah, I'm good now. I chugged a bunch of water. Um What's frustrating about the player stuff is that you'll see when they like if they talk to JJ Reddick, you'll see it come out of them like the more tactical, like more intricate understanding of the game. And they can talk it about it that way too. But for whatever reason, they just choose not to a lot of times. They just choose to lean into like the more casual stuff. Like I remember um in when mind the game came out there was everyone was reacting to it like Stephen a was upset a lot of people were upset they're like people don't care about this people don't want to hear this they're like they're i think they were upset about the idea that it was like inherently better than the hot takey stuff like that but still there was there's a bigger issue but i remember jeff teague on his podcast and i i'm not criticizing jeff teague because i think He's so funny. Like he serves a complete, he's definitely not one of these like annoying hot take guys. But I remember he was like, yeah, that's the kind of, that's the kind of basketball stuff I like. That's the way I would actually talk about basketball. And and so that's a show that really appeals to me. And I was like, oh man, I wish I could see Jeff Teague in a setting like that and like talking about basketball more like that. But it just seems that it's, it's just not happening for whatever, whatever reason. And another thing, um, with Zach Lowe specifically, when the news first came out, I was like, okay, this is not good for the business of sports journalism because my thought is they're, they are not making the money back on this contract. 
So um, because like written content is not being consumed and people just aren't into like actual basketball analysis, I was like, oof, this is this is a nail in the coffin. But then I was listening to the press box, which is the ringers um, sports media coverage podcast with Brian Curtis. They were saying that like Zach Lowe's podcast alone should be able to cover his salary enough and, and more. And so oh, yeah. then, then I'm like, okay, so this is literally a culture shift. Like they literally are going away from this type of coverage. And they're like, we just want influencers. We just want Stephen A., Pat McAfee and whoever else and Joe Buck. And well, no, it's, it's not fair to lump them in with them, but we just want big. We want, we don't want a bunch of people the same stuff. We want just some heavy hitters at the top who can go viral. Yeah. yeah. It's sad. And uh, that's why, that's why I liked it when you were like, I don't know, you're, you're a little more optimistic than we are. And I don't think, uh, that like it's necessarily doomed to go that way forever um because i do think when you talk about like the smart people on youtube everyone that like i like on youtube and watch um it feels like they're growing pretty consistently like there is a market for that it's just like whether or not that market's going to be like every weekday morning on cable tv uh, it just yeah it doesn't feel like we're necessarily moving in that direction yeah and i felt that i felt that this season you know um, the Pistons, you know, they lost 29 games in a row, but that's not going to get covered on first take. So it was cool. I feel like it was cool that a lot of my YouTube channel growth was because I was the Pistons fan. I was the guy that was watching all of this. Like that was, and it, but my YouTube channel, like it, it, kind of i think the subscriber count doubled like during the season because nice. it was just it was just the fact that like yeah this this team is bad but there are only so many fans out there well there are a couple there's there's crispy flakes and then there's a motown noah that are pistons fan mm. we were talking we were all talking about um like the pistons over time i think that that was when i was like okay like I, I see that there is a need for just even being a fan. You don't really need to just like try to like be like the super smart person. I think that the bar is so low. The bar is so low for us as sports content creators to be like, just cover, just cover something like a little bit off the beaten path. Yeah. And people are going to appreciate it, be like, wow, I, I, cause people are looking for this. They're looking for like, they are, there are those still those people out there that watch, 82 um charlotte hornets games you know there are people that like watch like they look out and they like care about their team and all of that and i feel like a lot of legacy media has abandoned um especially in the nba a lot of legacy media has abandoned the the fan bases you know like for the orlando magic the orlando magic was one of the coolest stories of the year um and they i think you know they had to deal with not only um them not really getting that many national tv games but a lot of their playoff games were just shipped off to nba tv you know that series went to seven <laughs> like that yeah. like i know a lot of those a lot of those games were blowouts don't but like that doesn't i'm it, it made me feel bad where it's like this we don't we don't treat all of our or we don't treat all of our nba teams equally and that kind of just makes me sad you know I, I i get why it's a long season and teams are ass sometimes but like you know there's cool things there's a i can say one i can say one cool thing about every nba team no problem like I guess yeah. one cool, yeah. You know, Wizards like, go. Wizards uh, go. Alex Star, transformational defender. Law <laughs> Kulabali grew to six nine. Kulabali, there's there's a dope there's a there's a dope uh, Japanese restaurant on the street called Kofuku. Oh, really? It's dope. Yeah. Ooh, I'm I more of a one. new new big Wong guy. There's a Chinese <laughs> place around the corner. Uh, no, but um, fuck, what was I just about to say? Um, yeah, I I don't know. It's just uh, it is very cool to like just kind of like oh that's what i was gonna say the magic not getting covered like you say it out loud it's like oh, i kind of understand it but if you're looking at it from like a content perspective literally the number one pick from like two years ago having one of the best playoff debuts we've seen in like five years or so like he was just like a transformational jump shooter in that series while be like it's just like shit you don't see from a guy who's 6'10 anymore and in the wake of it i feel like sports media 
has kind of uh leaned into Paolo. You know, it's super cool when guys are like tough shot makers at that size and everything. But yeah, it, it doesn't feel like the big people or the big dogs in the industry pick things up until there is like an agenda angle you can take with it where then now it's like, well, where does Paolo rank among the small forwards? Who would you rather have between Paolo or Kevin Durant or whatever? Just like all of these uh, until a player hits that level where you can start having, I don't know if like inflammatory is the perfect word for it, but those kinds of conversations, uh, yeah, it's one of yeah. it's one of those like prove you're entertaining before we entertain your you know, and then I'm like, oh well, yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, there that was that was the WNBA argument they had on first take where Stephen A is like, we talk more WNBA than any other show, and they're like, well, you weren't talking about it until it became <laughs> this massive story, and then we we talked about that before, like. If Stephen A is such a juggernaut, but he doesn't uplift any, he he's not like the tastemaker. He he doesn't set what people are talking about. He just he could like be. plays. Yeah, he could be, but he just plays the hits. He just like taps into whatever uh, people are already into. Like this, like the thing about first take is, I feel like first take has such a big enough lead on whatever Fox Sports is running that they could definitely just like cover first things whatever. first. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, whatever 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 is in the t- 10 o'clock fox sports spec segment now i feel like but it's one of those things where it's like at the cycle where it's like we want to get these like ratings and they this is what they think gets their ratings but i'm like they're probably there's a probably a big contingency of people that are going to just turn on first take no matter what you know i feel like it is what it is but yeah, yeah. and um, zach Lowe was good the thing about and also zach Lowe was good on tv it's not yeah. like he it's not like he was Woj. Like Woj wasn't really that like he wasn't like exciting TV. Mm-hmm. Like Woj yeah. was not exciting to and I and I'm like Woj, yeah, he was first to stuff, but then you asked him to like talk about it on TV and I'm like, okay, this is just your tweet. Yeah. On the yeah. Block. Like, you know, it's like that like Zach Lowe on TV was like pretty good. You know, so yeah. it's not it's not even it's not even the ESPN can't even do the Oh, Zach Lowe was only like a writer. I'm like, he could do all three. He was a three level scorer yeah. on the media, you know? Yeah. Damn. That's the a good Woj analogy. Was pretty dry. <laughs> it, it's hard. It's hard to be good at writing media, uh, writing podcasting and TV. It's it's so hard to be good at all three. Yeah. You know? And they don't need him for any of them anymore, baby. Yeah. So um, for, apparently, apparently so. All right. All right. All right. Um, the last question we got for you before we let you go is just who do you think is going to win the NBA championship? We're keeping a tally of everyone who comes on. I'll read you the tally after you give us your answer. That's kind of the way we've been doing it. Oh, man, the tally. All signs really point to Boston again. Like, I don't see why that's not, like, and I hate that that's, like, the the not fun answer, but – you know, that's one of the most complete starting fives I've ever seen in my life. And mm-hmm. then you brought them all back. <laughs> um, like that, that was, I'm like, Oh cool. That's, that sucks. I hate everything about that. Like, I think like Dallas getting clay is cool. I don't think that that would have like changed the scope of the series. I think that that those weren't like, it, it was a problem for the Mavericks. I don't think it was all of the problems. And then what does that leave? And then Denver's playing Calvin ball, like depending on like rookies and letting important role players go. Uh, they did that for the second season. That makes me, that makes me upset actually. Um, there's like a rumor you know, I, they're having, they're having trouble with the Aaron Gordon extension now. I don't know if you saw that. So no. that, dude, dude, that's an, get better. Dude, that's an all time bottling of a nice, a really, com- a really complimentary starting five. Yeah, who needs other, like a, yeah um lakers don't make me laugh you know it's one of those <laughs> things like i feel bad i feel like the lakers have too much new stuff you know like new jj reddick like and all of that um i don't the sixers have like 10 new players that's one of those things that could work but i'm not looking at it being like and i'm not really i don't know what to make of this knicks thing I yeah. really don't. It's 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 funny because I did not. I was like, oh, okay. The season was just about to start. Like, 
like this trade happened and then it's like boom media day and i'm like oh okay what why did it take okay um and then with this trade i think that takes away the timberwolves for me i don't really mm -hmm. like i don't really like how unless tim Conley has another move up his sleeve i'm i'm like uh maybe um yeah I, I think it has to be celtics unless i'm like really missing something obvious like the bucks just got older mm -hmm. right doc is still at the helm so that's gonna be not fun and i don't Lillard think you, Giannis have... didn't hang out again <laughs> oh my god uh yeah I don't think you mentioned the thunder, which is I oh think, yeah. oh no 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 oh man! <laughs> you're like, am I missing something? And I'm like, yeah, uh, but it's fine. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right, you're right, dude. I that okay? No, it's okay. Um, I do think that the thunder. I feel like just that the West is like just such a gauntlet you know mm -hmm. so it's like it, i feel like it's just easier to be like the celtics only have to worry about one basketball team um and they can if they take care of that then i it's like higher but like i like the caruso deal a lot for the thunder you know i think that every time i do a 2k sim the thunder like win like three championships in a row you know so i yeah i think it's the thunder are definitely up there so i go celtics thunder yeah. Which would be that would be that would be fun. I thought we were getting that series this year, but uh, apparently Luca Ball interrupted <laughs> that. Which you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't have Josh. G they started Josh Giddy like four of those games, so maybe oh shit, maybe shit's different if you have Caruso there in that dude, spot. Any that archetype of player is, is just so like every metric is like this person is like holding the offense back but then it's like look he passed ball well yeah maybe we but then can like, you know yeah. it's like isaiah oh, joe yeah. checks in and they go on like a 15-0 <laughs> run or something it's like oh this is way better yeah <laughs> but you, but you got to just stick it out you know like, <laughs> oh she's like come on man like well josh giddy is so young so being bad doesn't count if you're young you actually have to start in the lineup when you're young <sighs> No. Yeah, Isaiah um, Joe, Case and Wall. Like, that team is just so. That team scares me, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, that like I, I agree me. with you. Where it's like Celtics, Celtics Thunder Finals matchup. Uh, the Celtics. What did they just see like Cat in the conference finals or something? Whereas the Thunder have just been like getting the shit kicked out of them since the first game of the first round. Um, yeah. they, they had yeah they have to beat like LeBron and Anthony Davis round one or something. Uh, Memphis too, like they're gonna be in the mix. I feel like yeah. Um, to yeah, so many different teams, it's a gauntlet. And then they're like, I think the East will be harder for the Celtics. I think, uh, like obviously the championship counts. It's not Mickey Mouse ring, but like uh, if they were to get like that perfect of both injury and matchup luck again, where it's like, we don't have to face like we get Jalen. Like we don't have to face any of the best players in the conference and route to the title. Like it just doesn't matter at all. I don't think that will happen again, but yeah. I think, it, yeah, they'll just be better, better rested, better health more likely. Um, so yeah, the tally is at Boston with you six. So that's me, Pablo Jackson, Frank, slightly biased, Carson from Nerd Sesh and you, uh, the Thunder at three with uh, Isaac from the Deep Three podcast, Ben Pfeiffer from our Pacers episode, and one Matthew Sponhauer, and then Joel Morant from uh, the Pick Aside podcast. He he went with the Bucks. He's our only Bucks vote as as far as I wish we had had him on. He might pick the Knicks. We could go him into it now if we had him on. Again. <laughs> uh, Doc, Doc Rivers is still at the Bucks, right? Yeah, yeah, the okay. doctor. That's all. That's all I need to hear. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Wrap it up, guys. Um, all right. Yeah, what a what a weird season. <laughs> Such a weird season for them. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm like so. And they're gearing up for a normal one now. Definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you got anything that you want to plug to the people while you have this platform? Sure, for sure. Uh, feel free to follow me on YouTube. Just type K O F I E W H Y. Uh, feel free to follow Secret Base. That is uh, my full time gig. Um, secret Base. No, secret Base SBN. 
and then um yeah it's basically pretty much it beautiful thank you for coming on once again i hope the pistons do a little bit better this year um and pal gasol you can take it away lay down a list of what